Record, I'm on record. Okay, we're about to get the five minute signal. Being the first day of the uh, season here, we're going to talk about a few things. First of all, the boats got put in the water extra early this year, so that means the boats are probably already filthy. They're going to do a really good scrub job, and hopefully, you keep that up every Tuesday and Thursday, every other Monday. Keep these boats clean. But anyway, uh, some pretty dirty bottoms up um, because we were efficient getting them in the water so early. Um, obviously, you've noticed the nice new spinnakers. Uh, you owe me a six pack. Oh, no, can I say that, boss? Can I say you owe me a six pack? The first person that rips a brand new spinnaker. Uh, okay, only if you rip it because you're beam reaching and dousing your kite to windward and letting it uh, rape across your shrouds and ripping the thing into shreds. If you do that, all right, give the six packs to Jimmy. You'll be up there. Uh, anyway, okay, don't don't mess with our brand new shoots. Um, the spares are wonderful. They're our old shoots. Okay, other things, a um, lot of rain. I mean, way too much rain. I got a new motorcycle. I've got over a thousand miles in the last month. All pretty much pouring rain. Uh, but get the stop. So anyway, the point is on both ends, the bow, the stern of your boat, you got to open up your bulkhead. Okay, get in there. Limpa holes might not be working. You might have bow or stern water. You got to get that out. Okay, we've actually added more um, inspection ports. So most of these solings now have an extra inspection board aft by the skipper. All right, and we've fed every single racing keel, every keel, every soling keel. We fed to be much smoother. You don't want to know what they used to look like, uh, but they're all even now. Okay, so that was a nice, nice addition then. Okay, let's see. Check your stuff really, really well, all your equipment, because they've only been racing one day on Tuesday. Uh, all right, I might as well get down to the pin end, get ready for a start here. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, pins and rings and shackles and lines. I mean, they haven't been sailed. This is our shakedown cruise. Good look at your boat. I wish it would have been easier to fix it on the dock than it is out here. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. So the breeze is easterly. Isn't that nice? We're going to easterly, but the, um, the harbor is southeast. So it's not uncommon. For our easterly breeze to bend a little bit, it's called the contour breeze. It may bend from east to slightly more southeast. We may also find that this, on the other side that's high, it, the wind is rolling over on that side of the building. You might find a port tack lift at the top of the beam. I don't know. I've seen it before. Um, all right, and then current. All right, well, the current's coming in on Tuesday or something. The current was coming in. Uh, tide, uh, the tide was flooding. And current coming in like that um, didn't mean a thing because we had rain, lots of rain. We've got those three rivers, and it seemed like uh, the rivers, rivers flowing out kind of matched the flooding um, tide. And it didn't seem like there was that much current. You guys that sailed Tuesday can correct me on that, but it didn't look like there was that much current um, for, um, where were we? I think two hours. Uh, you know, the whole night on Tuesday was with um, flooding. All right, but high tide will be two hours later than two days ago. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Our last start, the line was square. We got lucky. Let's see, I thought it might be a little pink favorite, but it ended up being okay. Last ship uh, on the second beat of that first race was clearly a righty. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind getting close to boats. I got reversed sometimes. Okay, and we're out of the way of Volker. All right. Well, people aren't really jockeying for position yet. So I wonder what time is it? I mean, it must be about two minutes, one thirty. I think in one minute we'd see people approaching uh, the line. Okay. So let's we'll find out. Uh, obviously, that means I haven't thrown a watch on the start either. 
control. But I like that. I like every now and then trying to read the, the pattern, okay, the pre stock flow, and get a gauge of, of where are we in the sequence. Uh, I'm assuming he's, uh, oh, I can't, can't assume he's jiving. Oh, he is. Great. Okay. Silence out of Brad, amazing. I'm just trying to get a gauge on whether the line is square or not. I think it is. 67 is obviously here too early. You know, folks setting up like the yellow boat, setting up a little bit too low. I don't care where we are at the time. You don't need to get that far below the line. If the breeze dies or you get a stop at header, you ain't getting back here. All right. So, uh, and we have a bit of, um, you know, the tide's still flooding. Okay, okay, we're one minute. All right. So certainly they've got enough time. The yellow boats certainly have enough time. But 52 hasn't trimmed their main at all. I think um, even 62, uh, the yellow boats, uh, even 56, I might try to get a little closer. Maybe I can slow down later. You know, so I'm concerned. There's no reason for any boat to be late to the starting line. And I've been yapping for a good 30 seconds. Okay? So uh, get up on the line. Okay? There's plenty of room here at the pin. Uh, if we spread out, yeah, 50, 62, yellow, don't pinch it. Uh, blue, but yeah, yeah, we got people being late that could have easily been avoided. Of course, 65 is too early, and again, you you would have been better off, Jim, to punch down in front of 61, okay, because you, you can't do that, okay, so you're over, okay, you, you can't bring him down, you can't, 65 can't do that. Okay, all right, so that's two races in a row. The 65 boat completely hammered people. Their windward boat must keep clear. Okay, uh oh, I'm not getting any beer from that boat. Okay, but that's the fact. Okay, it's on video. Right, so here we go. Uh, it's a lot easier to win races if you get off the starting line in front. It's not the only way. All right, so again, um, you can be heeled to lure like 62 is in the light stop. And you can still point too tight to the wind and squeeze it up. Okay. Same thing here. These guys in the white boat uh, haven't really got going yet. Okay. Breeze is slightly uh, lighter than the first race. Okay. It looks like 71's lifted, but that's a velocity lift. That's pressure over there. Look over here. These guys are on the same tack. And they're scooting over. You know, I, I would guess that I would play the left lane today. I would try that based on what I've seen in the past. And I'm hoping that when I get over there, that uh, left you fill in and I'll have a decent angle on port. Okay. Uh, well, 71 that was looking good, bow faded down. They're not on lift anymore. 54, they're out looking for one. Okay, hey, they went left, I'll go right. Um, they don't look bad on port. Will they have anything to come back on stop? But I'm not sure they will. Um, I kind of hope they do. I, I want the breeze to be somewhat square here. Okay, so we'll see how 54 uh, checking in on the right hand side. Okay, I'm thinking maybe the left-hand side will do a little bit better. Okay. The impulse moving right along. Um, okay. They've got maybe a smidgen more open slot in the between the jib and the main, that slot. A little bit more open. A little bit more full of jib. I know on Tuesday we had a lot of jibs cranked way too tight. I mean, just strapped on the sheet uh, in the light air. Okay. Let's see how it works here. Uh, of course, the leader there had a good start to begin with. But I want to know how 61 fares. They've dug in a little bit more. They're in a little bit less current. That should help them out a little bit. I'm wondering if they're going to get a puff of wind as they come into Jeffrey's Cove here and scoot over the top. It doesn't matter if you have to duck 59. I don't think you will. But if you have to duck 50, who cares? Whatever you do, do not tack. Like, dump your main. Dump your main to duck. Oh, that's slow. Now you're not even getting a good lift off 59. Ease your main to bear off. Head up around the transom. The deflection of 59's wind off their sail gives you a good... What's 59 here is over-rotated, and they haven't come down. Look at that. That's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to see this on camera. 
Okay, we still don't know where 59 is going. They're at a beam reach. You're not close all unless not only the sails are in. Okay, but um, there it goes. <laughs> but you use your tiller to stand the edge of the wind. All right, so great. 54, 60, they did get something over there. It didn't come until right now, and they're in it, and they're taking the bus across. Sweet. All right, Jim did the right thing. Tack to blew it in the head on the starboard attack. Lift and see how it goes. Now, 61 still did good over here. Okay. Um, but, looks like the top four boats, two are going to come from the left, the two are going to come from the right. And that says the race committee must have done a good uh, square course. Uh, all, right. all right. Don't squeeze at 61. I know you want to come up, but do not pinch. Okay, stall that boat out. It's tough to get the truck going again. Okay, Jim needs to tack early. Don't overstand a poor tack lay line. That'd be silly. Three, two, one, tack. I didn't see that happening. I just assumed it was going to happen in three seconds. Okay. You're on board. You automatically assume you'll be ducking. If you get in between 54 and 60, awesome. But uh, don't expect to tack and foul. That would be lousy expectations. Okay, uh, get forward of the boat. 56. Look forward. Okay. What do you know? So the righty came in at the top, and I would say it was good for about six, seven boat lengths. Because that's about how far 54 was behind 65. Something like that. Looks like 61 has a good tack there. They're also got more leeway in the sense that they're outside the three boat like circle. The rules are slightly different there. You still are attacking both the must keep clear, and I think they've done that. Okay. Uh, wow. Well, uh, light. Offset, so too low. <laughs> and I was gonna fix that before the start. Is oh, I'll wait till we get up here. Now, you don't need offsets anymore. 58 coming across. You need a place to go. I would tack now. I wouldn't have. I would have tacked 67, but it's too late for that. So you're gonna tack, and you're gonna wish it was an ebbing current, so the current would, would sweep you up to the buoy. Okay. So you're hoping that 67 gets completely asked by 71. Completely stalled out, and then 58 can tack back onto port and cross them. Otherwise, it looked a look, looking a lot like a jibe out for John. John, I think you're jibing out. Okay. Earlier on, if I'd seen that earlier, I would have told him to duck. But he just had too big of a duck, he would have hit him anyway. So here we go. He did not jibe out, so 58 has got to avoid the white boat. You've got to avoid the white boat. Okay, there you go. White boat is pinching, and they won't they won't get to the buoy. Okay, they're just going to have to do attack. So, oops, we got the pole up, and we have to do attack. Okay. All right. Not a whole lot of speed on uh, Keith Fox's boat there. Okay. Uh, no, you can go. You have a right to get in there. Okay. Uh, so 67 filing. That's really, really difficult. They were barely moving. DC was way far away. But the fact is, snow was on board. DC was on top, and snow fouled. Okay. Uh, be good to your uh, competitors, right? It's not fair. If you foul somebody and then you get ahead of them and gas them and throw them to the back of the fleet. So, um, uh, all right, I'm going to fix the, uh, the offset, which is going to mean I'm going to miss some of this lovely uh, situation here. But what's going on is everybody reached off on the side of Jive, got to the side of it here, Jive to port. Pretty standard for light air where they had to have angles that were a little bit more heated up. Okay, had the pump come in. We could drive down 64. There's not enough breeze to be that low. 57 out there. You know, I think if they jive right now, you no, know, they might, they might come back across and maybe be in fifth place. The top four were kind of launched a bit. Okay, but you look a little by the lead there, 57. Okay, and now the booms. I don't know. Now the booms center line. I don't know what's going on in that boat. 
I would eat the blue mountain wolf. By the way, God, you need to tack. He was so far beyond. Daniel, tack your boat. And we go, okay, wow. Okay. All right. Now we're going to be broad reaching into the air. Oh, I'll go fix that. Okay. You know, when there's no one else around you, what are you worried about? Tack early, get the double tack. That's fine. You overstood. <laughs> Brad loves to state the obvious. He's such a jerk about it. All right, I'm going to shut up for a second, move my offset, and get back to you. All right, my goodness, the breeze is dying, which means you have to do more than just trim your main <laughs> You've got to heat the boat up. You can't sail dead downwind with your main trim to practically sail on it. Um, a bunch of folks here can have a little bit more to heal. At least have one person to do it, if not two. All right, wait forward, wait to do it. 52, they're really moving nicely now. It's like a breeze is filling in from behind and complete inversion. Maybe, we'll see. Probably not enough time when I say inversion, I mean the people that the back of the back get punched in the front because they come scooting down in a big pile of plastic. So I love the fact that 58 and 52 have all that breeze. These guys are sitting here. Pay attention. Look all around. Look all around, baby. Look behind you guys. See that. Don't be shocked when that fills in. You need to know that's coming and set the boat up at the right, what do we call it, attitude. Okay. Ooh, 56 minutes. It comes down. Oh, oh wait a minute. That was, I'm sorry. That pop just disappeared. I thought for sure that 56 getting this pinnacle down this soon did not work. All right. Anyway, okay, now that I'm down here, I can see that the wind has died and tried to ship over here. More like we just 90 degrees something. Okay. But that just happened to be right now. Okay. So we can't do anything about that on the second beat. We're going to have an unsquare beat. And it's okay to pump your tiller a few times from middle to one side and back to middle and one side again. If you're not crisscrossing over the center, you're only turning, you're not sculling. I'm saying that because 65 here needed to scull their turnaround because they just had to get on to stop attack before they hit the finish line. Okay. So a uh, little current, uh, and there is current, I checked it when I was moving the buoy. There's a bit of current pushing this car both backwards. Okay, that's it, sit forward. Uh, okay, lines dragging on the water is slow. Uh, you know that's going to happen after the kite comes down. So clean up your boat. So 60. Uh, was that my arm? Uh, oh, I can't tell. Uh, look at this weight here. Come on, guys. You need to have weight to the blue inside the boat. So, uh, there. Abel's got a couple people to do it. That's good. He can sit in a little bit more forward. Okay, have a little bit of <laughs> 60. Stop trying to point to the finish and foot out just slightly. Drive over the top. Of Look at 62. Do not give 62 a chance to beat you. Is that Tom, maybe? Tom Doke down there. Okay. Um, 60. Squeezed up. It doesn't matter whether you finish at the committee boat end or the ball end. Okay. I can't believe 62 is going to go by them. They 60 had such a good lead here. But, uh, I don't know, the dragon line, no, that wouldn't be the reason. That's not enough of a reason. But look at 62 go, baby. He's flying. Well, I get some, a bunch of uh, buoys to move because now we're looking at southeast, maybe all the way south, as I mentioned. Okay. Let's see how fast I can get that done. But it does mean not catching the end of this race so we can get the next one going. Okay. There we go, over the top. Well, nice job, uh, Tom, in making it nice and close. At this point, you're, well, about four boat lengths back would have been about to, to, to foot off a bit more. All right. If 62 foots off, you wonder, does 60 chase them? They shouldn't. But if they did, there might be a race again. Uh, but if 62 says, oh, no, I'm just going, I'm sorry, 60 says, I'm just going to go to the finish and not worry about 62, uh, then they wouldn't have, uh, you know, wouldn't have bit. 
Uh, sometimes you can do what we call slowing, slowing from behind. The guy in front of you is so busy watching you, okay, that he's not watching what's going on every place else. So, for instance, I see a weight coming. I, I tack when I think the other guy is going to tack after me into the wake. Well, I tack before the wake, they tack into it, and they stop. I slowed them from behind. Okay. All right. And there you go. Okay. Plus to something. All right. So I'm going to close it up here and fix this race for the next one.